gon' call me Jiggy when I'm home, they call me Snowman yeah. We ain't never home, but treat the city like the base, yeah You know where to look if you're looking for the wave, yeah Looking for the... What it do? What's going down? What's happening? Welcome to another episode of the Eurostep Podcast. Got a good one with good one for y'all today with a guy who's been all around just giving people buckets and killing. Snowman, how you doing? How's Seattle treating you? Man, you know what? It's still raining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into it, man, because we got a good one for y'all today. We got a player that has won the Alfonso Ford Trophy, a player that's been an all Euro League second team, a player that's been a Euro League MVP for the month of February and the month of November, an Italian Super Cup champion, a two time Greek League champion, a Greek Cup winner and the Greek League Most Spectacular Player. Welcome to the show, Mike James. Mike, welcome. One of the other things I wanted to add to that is arguably the best player in Europe right now. Let's just keep it, keep it a stack. Arguably, yeah. Keep- arguably, yeah. Your name has came up a lot on the part of, of guys who saying that you give out a lot of buckets. Uh, yeah, every once in a while, man. I don't know. I don't get that, man. I try to stay out of that. <laughs> Mike, man, let's 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 jump in, man. Um, I think Dave wanted to jump in before I get going. Go ahead, Dave. Mike, man, I wanted to ask you something, man, that's really been on my mind for ever since I first heard about you. For a player of your caliber, I really think you're a high level player. You ended up at a school from my state that a lot of players, you know, even from the Houston area, don't even think about going to. How did you end up at Lamar University? Well, uh, first I was a JUCO kid, so uh, I didn't really have grades in high school. I didn't really know a lot about – clearing house and stuff like that. Like, I ain't, I ain't have a lot of people that, like, uh, I hung out with that was, like, basketball players or, like, went to school before me. All my big homies is, like, uh, you know, just regular people that got a regular day job. Right. Like, uh, clearing house and stuff was – I was oblivious to stuff that uh, kids know automatically now that you got to do. That was just something totally, uh, like, I was oblivious to. So I really didn't know nothing about, like, my requirements and nothing like that. I honestly didn't know until late into my junior year when uh, University of Portland was recruiting me. And they were like, are you a qualifier? And I was just like, I mean, probably, I don't know. And then they explained <laughs> the whole aspect to it, of it. And I was like, oh, well, I don't know. But uh, so I was a JUCO kid. And, you know, uh, just kind of uh, I did my thing there, but kind of had some uh, – some knocks on me a little bit about my attitude and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, uh, I was getting recruited highly even even with that going in late in my sophomore year, but I got into some trouble later after the season. So that kind of scared most of the schools away. So I ended up getting an offer from Lamar uh, in June. Like, no, nah, maybe not June, maybe May, maybe May. I got the offer late because uh, like, I was going to go to Portland State, but they had already gave my offer away because, like I said, I was supposed to go somewhere big at this point. But uh, some stuff happened. People kind of, you know, people hear stuff and then they get some reassurance. Stuff don't go your way. So uh, basically the coach from Lamar called me and said uh, they was recruiting me, yada, yada, yada. And I just asked, well, do I have a scholarship? And they said, yeah. And I said, all right, I don't need to take no visit. I'll I'll come there. Just tell me when I got to show up. Mm. And then uh, I had to take like a summer school class, a math class, to uh, get into the school. And I was there first day. So you go to Lamar, um, and, and like to your point, man, many folks, because I was hearing it all the time that he's a Pac-12 guy, he's a this, he's a that. Um, nobody understood why you ended up at Lamar. But you go there, you handle your business, you cook, right? 
Now you're looking to leave school and enter the professional ranks. What do you, where's your head at in that moment? Are you thinking you're going to the league? Because you averaged, uh, I don't, I don't remember the exact, I forgot the exact number. You averaged quite a bit, twenty something, huh? Twenty. Exactly, average twenty, right? Now you're going into the professional race. What are you thinking? Are you thinking you're getting drafted? Are you thinking you're not? Are you thinking where's your head at? Uh, I didn't really think I was going to get drafted because I played a lot of two my sophomore year. And that was when we were really good. And I played a lot of two because the other guard on our team was the only really – he could play some two, but he was really a point guard. Mm -hmm. And we were two, the two best players on the team. So, like, for us to be good, I had to slide over to the two for us to be just, like, a better team in general. Mm -hmm. So, I think uh, – and our offense wasn't, like, predicated on, like, pick and rolls or nothing like that. We ran a motion. So, it was a lot of down screens and a lot of just coming off curls and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I think like my the position I played and like the offense we ran didn't really show like my ability to actually play point guard, which is obviously what I have to play at my height. Right. So I think uh, just that. So they were just like, okay, he can score like every other, I guess, light skinned six foot person in the world. So <laughs> I think I just didn't stand out. Like I remember I did a, uh, I was working out in Florida for for uh, like right after I got done. And they came to see somebody else. Some I, I don't even remember the team, but they came to see somebody else and talked to me after. And they was like, "We didn't even realize you was that athletic. We didn't know you could dunk, yeah, and just all this other stuff." And I was like, "Dang, y'all just didn't know nothing. Y'all just thought I was out here shooting jumpers, I guess." <laughs> but I think uh, just going to a lower school, and we didn't we didn't get to play at the big stage on the tournament like we should have. The game we lost, we lost playing around, like not taking it serious, and so. Uh, my opportunity to show people on a bigger stage just wasn't there. You guys lost to Vermont, right? Yeah, we lost to Vermont. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still about <bothering> it. <laughs> With respect to Vermont, but you know, I think we all know what we're saying. <laughs> we lost to Vermont. Uh, so look, so you lose to Vermont, you move on, man. You Now you're going into the professional ranks. You don't feel like you're getting drafted. Um, you sign with an agent, you're working out. You end up overseas. Can you talk a little bit about where your head's at when you're finally like, oh, shoot, I'm really going overseas? Like, Well, I think, like, I never really thought, like, uh, like kind of like how I was oblivious to clearing house and, like, going to college. I was kind of oblivious to, like, professional basketball in general, like how to get into the NBA, what they're looking for, overseas basketball. So... Like, I went overseas with the mindset, like, I got to kill everybody and that's all I should worry about mm -hmm. and, like, try to win while I'm doing it. But, like, as to now where I'm just like, yeah, as long as we win, we'll just move forward and I'll just get it back. Right. It's like a whole different my, – my mindset has changed just because just, like, growing up a little bit and being older and just uh, trying to focus on stuff that people was actually looking for. So, like, uh, early on when I first got over, like, I – Basketball wise, I was mad when I got took out. I was mad when like I wasn't in the game. I'm like, yo, I'm the best player. I should never come out. I should play 40 minutes. When in retrospect, that's ridiculous and that's stupid. I'd be asking for stuff now. So, so okay. well, yeah. I'm glad you shared that because I, I know that there's a you, you played in right now. So many guys are looking at you like, man, Mike James, right? You may not even recognize it to the to the degree that outsiders do, but um. I know that in your journey, you played in places like Italy and not the first division. You played in places like Croatia. Can you talk about your time there and how that kind of either prepared you through, through the positives and some of the negatives? Can you talk a little bit about those spots you've been to and how they helped get you where you are today? Yeah, I think, uh, well, I think your first year overseas is always the hardest, no matter what situation you go to, because it's just a culture shock. It's just a whole different vibe a whole different everything like uh when i first got to croatia the only non-stick shift car they could give me was a smart car <laughs> so i had a smart car but i never drove it the gym was literally like i couldn't like you couldn't if i drove the car to the gym i wouldn't get no closer to the gym if i drove it than if i walked that's how close i was so I literally didn't drive my car so much that it snowed and my car wouldn't turn on at one point because I was trying to go to McDonald's one day and it just didn't turn on. <laughs> anyway, uh, I just had to add that in. I just thought about that. But anyways, like, uh, 
it was just a total different, like, uh, coaches kind of talked to you, like, the, he, we had, like, a Croatian coach, Serbian coach, so he kind of talked to me while, and I'm, you know, I already got a bad attitude, I'm kind of from, you know, I'm light-skinned, but, you know, and then. Mike, Mike, come out. <laughs> talk about it, dog, I, talk, we hey, talk about it. <laughs> Mike, 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 oh, no, we show Euro stepping, we can keep everything 100. If you feel like cussing, right. you can do that. You could just feel comfortable. For real. Like I said, I'm, I'm light skinned and all that, but I'm, you know, I'm kind of from a, a tougher area and, you know, stuff like that. So, like, you know, I'm, you don't talk to me like that. That's how I was thinking at the time. Right. When it's some stuff you kind of take more personal when you're younger. Now, if somebody said that to me, I might brush it off a little bit more. But, uh, that that was a culture shock. We had a conditioning day. I hated that. We just had a regular conditioning day. It was yeah. the crazy part. Is we was like nine and no, and we lost one game. And he was like, "It looked like we tired. We got it every Wednesday. We running." And I was just like, "Every Wednesday we running. What's going on here?" And the two days and all that and the lifting. It was it was a lot. It was a lot when I first got over there. I was like, "Man, being a pro is tough." And uh, uh, I I was just about to have my daughter, so that was rough. Yeah. And I was just uh, being overseas is tough. Just it was always cold. I ain't never been nowhere cold. I went to I'm from Portland, but I went to school in Arizona and Texas, so yeah. I ain't seen no snow in a minute. It was just it was rough in Croatia. I think uh, just the culture shock and just uh, I was the only American, so it wasn't like a, a lot of people I could just have a, like a regular conversation with. So hey, Mike, what you uh? I want you to elaborate on your culture shock a little bit. Like, what was the most shocking thing to you when you first, uh, while you're doing your time in uh, Zagreb? Just like the language barriers everywhere you go is just rough. People just stare yeah. at you. I didn't get a haircut for like six months. Yeah. I had like the little <laughs> Kirk Hyre tag. And cool. So, you know, just all that stuff just – for a person who I'm used to getting a haircut every week and a half, I go out there, I ain't get a haircut for six months. Mm. The food a little bit different. I'm I'm cooking a lot more now and I hated to cook. I still hate to cook. I never cook now. So, you know, just all that stuff rolled into one. It was different. And then, you know, they kind of late. And then it's my first year. So I don't know about this late on payments thing. So I'm getting late on payments. They acting like it's okay. I don't think it's okay at all. So. It's just a lot of accumulation stuff that uh, before you go overseas, you don't really understand it all the way. Mm-hmm. Like people complain about it all the time, but you're like, yeah, that's not going to happen to me. That must be just him or just him or yada, yada, yada. Then when you go over there and you figure it out, you're like, dang, that's me too. And so, with that, that was happening to you and you were leading the league in scoring at the time. Yeah. So it- Guys just need – it can happen to anybody, and it's going to happen to you if you go over there. It's going to happen. I was I was playing well, but – and then, uh, you know, me and the coaches had some differences. He didn't really speak that good of English, and he didn't want me there in the first place. He wanted some other dude that was Croatian. Mm. So, like, uh, as soon as he – he said something crazy to me, so I said something back, and – I'll, if you ain't got no Serbian coach or ever had no Croatian coach, if you get into an argument, with it's all the way off. It's like not no oh, coming yeah. back from that. Yeah. yeah. And it was just like, it was off. And then I ended up going to Israel just for like the playoffs. Like I went there for like maybe like four games before the playoffs. And then I finished with the playoffs with them. But uh, that was way better. They were a little bit more welcoming. I had an American on my team. It was more Americanized stuff. It's more Americanized stuff in Israel in general, though. So yeah. it's a little bit more welcoming. But, uh, Mike, I, what I want to, what I want these guys to know is what level you were at in Israel, so so they can understand that you didn't just pop up here at Maccabi. I mean, that's not Maccabi. I'm sorry, Cheska. Right? You 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 grinded to get here, right? So can you talk about where you were in Israel? Well, my first year I played regular Croatian league, not like uh, Abba or none of that. Just regular right. Croatian. Right. And then my second year I played. That was no. The playoffs in Israel was second division. Right. I went there and just uh, got my opportunity. I wanted to show people that I I needed some extra money, obviously. And then I just wanted to, uh, you know, finish out and just, you know, end on a positive note on the season. 
I ended up signing in Italy the next year in like the third division, second and a half. They had some weird playoff right. thing doing. So, uh, so uh, I mean, that year was really good for me. I got MVP, I think, that year or something like that, or close first team, something. I don't really remember. But that year was really well. It was way better. It was probably one of my uh, – that was my best year for sure up to that point. Wow. As far as being comfortable and getting and getting comfortable, I had a, a – we Canadian. He wasn't American, but he was Canadian. He was real cool. We still cool to this day. So, I mean, uh, they was more accommodating. They had a nice place to stay, better Wi-Fi. You know, it was just better in general. The food was real good. So, uh mm-hmm. That was that year. I think right there is what made me feel like absolutely comfortable in Europe, and to be able to and wanted to keep going. I still didn't even know what Euroleague was at this point, by the way. Because <laughs> I remember thinking the next year when I went to Greece, we was watching games, and I was like, "What's that? What league is they playing in?" And they was like, "This is Euroleague." I was like, "Where they play? Like who they play? This look like they playing for their national teams or something." <laughs> I was oblivious, man. You don't know nothing when you go over there. They just got to tell you everything. Yeah, right. we all went through that. Every, everybody who came to Europe, we, <clears throat> no one knew, knew anything about countries, about leagues, about nothing. It's just, I don't know. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a, it's like a gap. Like that we don't get to, we don't know about Europe just in general, to be honest. Right. So, so you get to, so you play third division Italy. Mm-hmm. You kill, go crazy. You you end up in Greece, and I don't think you stayed in Greece very long. No, I think I played like six games, seven games. And, and what happened after you played those six, seven games? I got bought out by Basconia for my my buyout was like ten thousand. I remember like it was yesterday. <laughs> my buyout was 10, and they bought me out, but they didn't pay it right away. So I had to, I, I just left like one morning. I was like, they was like, oh, we want you to come play the game on Saturday. I was like, nah, I got to get out of here. We got a game, we got a Euroleague game. And I ain't never, I ain't, never, I ain't really what I was talking about. When we got a Euroleague game, I got to go. Right. <laughs> so, 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 you, so, I'm <laughs> so you just dipped. <laughs> Got a Euroleague game, man. I gotta go. He's like, got to go. I didn't even get in the game. Matter of fact, I didn't think I suited up. I think I was just at the game watching. And I remember watching the game. I can't wait to get out there. <laughs> so yeah. you get there now. You get there and you're coming off a really killing, killing. Like you were, I wanna say you were leading Greece in scoring at the time um, when you got bought out. And you get there, things are a little different. Man, they're a lot different. (laughs) I think the first game against Valencia, I played like 10 minutes. I had 12, though. I scored a lot in a little bit, but I didn't play that long. I was happy with my little performance. I was like, all right, I had a solid little performance. I got out of there. You know, nobody could say I did nothing wrong. And, uh, you know, that was like right before we had top 16. That was when we still had top 16. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we we made it after that win, I think, and then we got to play the rest of the EuroLeague, so that was cool. Right. So you do that. Um, you go on. You stay with that team for another year, right? Yeah, we played. I played that whole year. We missed the playoffs by the last game, and then I had another year on my contract after that. Okay, so they gave you a one. Was it one plus one or a two? Just straight two. A one plus one. They didn't let me out after the summer. Right. Um, so you play the one you you play the second year of the one plus one, and this year goes a little better. Um, and wh- where's your head at at this point? You know you've you've done it in Euro League, like you've shown who you are a little bit. Still not what we see now, but you've shown yourself on that stage and that you're more than capable of you know doing your thing. So so where's your head at now? What where are you thinking? You 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 feeling like I want to go to the league? You feeling like I want to? Where's your head at? So after my first year in basketball, I played summer league that summer with mm. Phoenix, and I played good. But they wouldn't let me get out of my contract to see to like explore that more. So after that year, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I didn't really have no clear cut like opportunities in NBA. Everybody was like, "Come to camp and all this stuff." And so I didn't like uh, just like I am now. I don't really like wasting money or taking or losing out on money or stuff like that to just. Uh, 
to just go into the dark, especially because mm -hmm. I'm not a big name guy. It's, I'm not like somebody, I got connections everywhere. It's not like I just go into a room and I just know I'm going to be somewhere. So uh, Panda offered me the deal that I wanted, and uh, I ended up going there the next year. I signed a one-year. So I'm one year in Panda. Okay. So you, you go to Panda, you hoop. You hoop. Yeah, I had a good season this year. Yeah, I had yeah, a good season. You hoop. You, <laughs> look, you hearing Dave? Yeah, yeah I, I had a good season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a better season. Okay. Okay. So you hoop. How was Panda? They got some of the craziest fans around. So how was that experience? It was cool. I mean, they liked me. I mean, they liked me because I had a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. uh, that was when I was a little bit more athletic still, so I was dunking a lot more. So they liked that. If, if They liked that, too. Time out, Dave. You hear this guy? You ain't seen me dunking forever. Don't act like that. <laughs> hey, I will. I will. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it tall. Hey, I'm going to hey, gonna... challenge some of, the, some of the best defenders around Europe. And I can tell, like me knowing hoopers, I could tell in your in your mind, you like, I'm about to go punch it on this guy. But now you like, yeah, I ain't got a little athletic at that time. I, ain't got to <laughs> I, I will <laughs> say, I had, I had, I watched you just the other day go down the lane, and you turned it over this way. I said, Oh, okay. <laughs> Usually that's a bang out. I didn't used to do that. <laughs> nah, it's well, still there. Though. It's still there, though. So, so you kill in Panathinaikos, you're feeling good. Now, after this year, there's no – you're not locked in to any team in Europe. You were on a one-year deal. Where's your head at at that point? Well, see, before we even got done with EuroLeague, I probably shouldn't even be saying this. It's probably illegal, but, I mean, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> uh, Earl Watson called me because he got the job at Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And – we spent time together when I was in summer league and we got cool. Earl is real cool. Earl, Earl is a solid dude. So he called me. He was like, yo, I got a job. Come over. This is the time. You just stop being over there. Come on. Mm -hmm. It's like, I told you when I got, if I got the job, I'm getting you. So come on. So, uh, I didn't even really talk renegotiation with nobody. I didn't even talk to no teams. It was just like, all right, I'm on my way. I ended up signing some, the new thing at the time was a two way. That was, I was like the first person to sign. Everybody was so mad at me for signing. Everybody was hot, but they had like told me I was never going to play G league. They said I was just going to run out my days and they was going to keep me. So it was basically like I was signing the minimum. So it really didn't bother me like that. I mean, mm -hmm. so you sign a minimum, you get to Phoenix and they actually, you, you get to a point where you start starting. Yeah, that was wild. I wasn't. I went from in preseason like being like, people don't know this about the NBA. If you on the team and you're not like the first or second string, you get treated like you're not even on the team. Like <laughs> we in practice, I'm not getting subbed in. I'm watching on the sidelines. I'm chilling, and when I do get subbed in, I shoot every time because I'm just like, yo, this is wild. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one open gym. Like I didn't play like the whole day because. They had got into it in the both teams, so I'm just sitting on the sideline. And the next day, I didn't pass the whole time my team didn't lose. I was so mad. I, I didn't pass one time the whole day. <laughs> but uh, so uh, basically, that was how it was. I was third string. I got to play. I think my first preseason game was in Portland because I was from Portland. So Earl let me play like the whole end of the – the whole fourth, I think, I played. So Earl let me – that was cool of him, to be honest, because I hadn't played before that. And then uh, – Oh, my bad. Go ahead. And then uh, we – the first game of the season, we got blown out bad by like 60 or 50. Mm. But, I, but I had like 12, though, so I was solid. Dave, we were already – Dave, him and the 12. Him and the 12. Hey, it was, hey, it was, hey, it was my first NBA game. <laughs> I came and we was already down 50, man. I had 12. I don't know what you want me to do. I can't first league game, I can't 12, first league sure. game, 12. 12, the magic number. I came in when the game was over already in the fourth. <laughs> so I just shot. Earl was like, score as much as you want. Just shoot every time. I was like, bet. <laughs> it made sense to me. Okay. But, uh, 
So you go from being third string to then what changed? What happened? To be honest, in the second game, Tyler Eulis, who's my guy, by the way, I love Tyler. Uh, yeah, the second game, he played bad in the first half, and the game was close, and Earl was like, get ready, you playing in the second half. And, I mean, in the NBA, you basically just crack jokes while you're on the bench. It ain't really no serious stuff going on. I was in my sweats just, you know, talking shit on the end of the bench. Not really about nobody, just in general. So, in the second half, uh, we played – I think we ended up losing by two, to be honest, to the Lakers when Lonzo first got there. Mm. So, uh, I mean, that was cool. I got – at that point from that halftime, I was just backup. And then the third game, we went to play the Clippers, and we got blown out again, to be honest. But I was the backup at this point. So, I mean, uh, that was real well. I liked it. I was happy. I was happy at the backup. But then after the third game, Earl got fired – Bled, tweeted some crazy shit, and then all of a sudden I was starting. <laughs> That's really what happened. We was, I swear, we had a day, we had a day, we had a back to back, and then a day off, and the next day we had a game. So say this is like Monday, I'm at the house just playing the game with book on on our headphones, and we playing, we playing like Call of Duty or something. So we playing, playing, playing. He like Mike, check your phone. Cause he's streaming and I'm like, what you check my phone? You want me to die? So I, I looked, I said, Oh shit. And I said, yo, I'm finna call you. And he got off the game. I'm like, yo, what does that mean? Cause it was, they had tweeted Earl fought, got fired. I'm like, yo, what does that mean? Why didn't they tell you? If they didn't tell you, that's not good. They should tell you that stuff, book. He's like, well, I don't know what's going on. I'm finna find out. So he, we got off the phone. I'm just chilling. People calling me, asking me what's going on. Obviously, I'm new. They don't, I don't know nothing. And then Bledsoe tweeted, I don't want to be here. And I, I follow him on Twitter at this point because it's obviously my teammate. So I'm looking at it. And I'm like, that don't look good. Mm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Obviously, I don't know nothing about the NBA at this point. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that can't be good. <laughs> right. <laughs> so then I call Book again and he don't answer. And I'm like, oh, okay, this ain't good at all. Mm. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to just leave it alone. I'm going to just show up when I need to show up tomorrow. So we had a game and we had shoot around. So I showed up and Bled is there. So I'm like, all right, everything cool. And then uh, I goes to get some shots up. I come back in the locker room. He's like, all right, Mike, I'm going to holler at you. I'm like, what you mean you're going to holler at me? Where you going? <laughs> He's like, I'm going to holler at you. <laughs> so then I'm like, I, I don't, I'm like, bro, I don't know what's going on. So they call us into the team video room and the, and the owner and the president, and the GM, everybody's in there. And they start talking. They're like, yeah, obviously we had, uh, we had to make some changes. Obviously Earl's not with us no more. And uh, we sent Blitzo home on like a leave or whatever it's called until we could trade him. So yeah, that's just what we just want to keep you updated. Let's get a win tonight. And I was like, all right. So at this point, I don't know what's going on. We got like 30 minutes until practice. So when that happens, I'm like, bro, this can't be good. They finna trade him. They finna cut me because I'm the only, Earl, Earl the only reason I'm here. So they finna cut me, I'm out. So the crazy part is they was like, Mike, come to the office. And right when they said that, I said, oh, fuck, this can't be good. So the head coach called me in there. He's like, the net, he was assistant now, the head coach. They was like, yeah, uh, so you're starting now, you're our starter, so you know, just be ready for that. And I and I'm going into this thinking I'm finna get cut, and they just told me I'm starting. You got, and we played the Kings. I had the Aaron Fox that night. Crazy. So you go from literally from third string, second string, starting. You start for a while, then you kind of it felt like you watching it from where I'm at, it felt like you kind of went from like you said, third string, second string, first string, and then Second string, third string out. Basically. <laughs> okay. So what happened? And How'd you go from starting to out? It, I feel like it wasn't no reasons for none of this. For my up and down, I feel like I played the same way the whole time. Like uh, the first game I played, for the, I started, I had the game winner. Mm hmm the Kings. And then uh, we won the next game against Utah. Lost at home when we went to Portland. Beat Brooklyn, beat Washington, 
lost to New York and then came home. And I think we lost like two more games after that, Brooklyn and Miami, and then I was done starting. But we won like four or five games out of like nine. And I mean, for that time for the Suns, I felt like we was good. I was like, I mean, we ain't perfect, but shit, that's solid for us. Right. So then he called me in his office again and was like, yo, we want you to come off the bench. We need some scoring off the bench. And I was just like, all right. And then it just went downhill from there. Downhill from there. Can can you dive in a little a little deeper to that story? Because no, I've never heard it told. I don't I don't know anything about it. We just know Mike ends up out of Phoenix, back overseas. I mean, basically, I was playing, and uh, some games I would play, some some games I wouldn't play, mm-hmm. and like uh, to be honest, I think I would have stayed the backup all year, but Book got hurt. Mm. And when Book got hurt, they started changing a whole bunch of stuff. Like, we played Minnesota at Minnesota right when Book got hurt. And Coach called me to his office again. He said, Mike, you're going to play, like, 30 minutes tonight. You're going to play one and two tonight. And I was just like, all right. So I'm in there guarding Jimmy Butler and Andrew Wiggins in the post in Minnesota. <laughs> and they hit turnarounds on me. And I'm just looking at the coach like, I don't know what you want me to do about that. Like, he's uh, – I don't got no action at that. He didn't he didn't just get a layup, he shot a fadeaway. He gotta make that. But I ended up having like 28 though. And we lost by like three. Mm. So when that happens, I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna be a starter, but I'm at least gonna be the six, seven man or something. I'm gonna work my way in here because I'm killing. And like the next game I had like 20, and then I had like 12 or something, and I was playing solid. I'm like, yeah, we suck, obviously. Book is hurt. We can't be good right now. So it ain't my fault. <laughs> and then they brought in another guard when we was like, right after I had like 18, I had a cool game. No, you know what it was? Right after we lost to San Antonio and I had 25 and I missed the game winner. Hmm. The next game, we had another point guard starting and I was like, I didn't play the whole game. And we went on the road and what's crazy is I didn't play for like three games and then we went to uh, Dallas and I hadn't played the whole game. The last five minutes, the assistant coach, Ty Corbin, I can't remember, I remember this like it was yesterday. In the timeout, I'm over here cracking jokes. Like, at this point, I know I'm not playing. Don't bother me. Let me just be over here and, and enjoy my life. <laughs> Ty, Corbin, Ty Corbin comes over to me and is like, yo, Mike, get ready. I told him to put you in. Go win this this game. And I'm looking at him like, go win this this game? I ain't paid attention to y'all report. I ain't been watching the game. I've been everywhere else but locked in. So they put me in. I end up scoring like eight or like five in the last five, four minutes or something. We end up winning. I had a big three in the corner to like seal it. And so after that, I'm like, okay, maybe I did something solid. I might start getting back in. Like we basically, I, I didn't win us the game, but I damn sure help. That didn't happen. <laughs> I went right back to the bench, right over there. Me and Greg Monroe was over there, and Book was in a suit. We was just all three lined up talking. And then uh, they tried it again. They tried that same thing again and, and against the Clippers. We was down like 15, and they was like, we need some scoring. And Ty Corbin was like, I told him to put you in. You about to go in. Go give us something. Go win us a game. And I'm like, all right. It didn't work this time. It, it, they tried it again in, uh, before that in Toronto, too. But mm. it, it didn't work this Sounds like you were just a part of a huge shit show. I mean, you know, I <laughs> wasn't gonna say that. But you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, how did we get to the point where you're no longer there? So then, uh, my two way contract had ran out, and they were and they kept me past it. But then, like, uh, they used like uh, an injury something to keep somebody on, and it had the time it ran up. And the other point guard was already starting, and he was the starter. Tyler Ulysses was on a guaranteed, like a guaranteed contract for the next year after that. Yeah. So I was just like, he's out. He got to be the one that's out. And it was like December. It was like December 18th or something. It was right before Christmas because I remember uh, I didn't go home for Christmas right away because I had uh, my uh, 48 hours uh, waivers. Gotcha. So. You end up going back overseas. Before that, I went to New Orleans, though. 
Okay, we'll talk about that. I love New Orleans, actually. And I was supposed to play. The GM liked me. I think even Gentry liked me. And one of the assistants liked me. But right when I got there, and it, to be honest, to, I didn't play when I was there, and it ain't really their fault, and I don't really blame them. So New Orleans, I don't really like. They treated me well when I was there. They don't, like, I just got tired and wanted to leave. So right when I got there, they had won like two games in a row. And I remember I flew out like seven in the morning from Portland to New York to go play the Knicks. Got there like the night before at like 3 a.m. or something crazy. And we played the Knicks and AD had like 50. I didn't play because obviously I got there like I wasn't really ready to play. They shouldn't have played me. I was overweight. I hadn't been doing nothing. They shouldn't have played me. And then so they had won like three in a row. And then the next game I played a little bit and that was four in a row. And then Jameer Nelson came back from like his leave with his family or something. He had asked for some days to go away. So he already knew everything. So he uh, came back and helped out. And he actually was cool with me, to be honest. He could have not been cool because I was kind of brought in to like replace him, but he was solid. And uh, they end up, we end up going on like winning like 18 out of 20 without me barely being on the court. So it wasn't like, it was like shit. He, he called me, Alvin Gentry called me into the locker room. He was like, we want to play you. We want to see you, but Come it's hard on. to like, yeah. So I played like a couple games, like against the Thunder, I played real good. And uh, I remember when I was coming out, one of the assistants and AD was like, why y'all taking him out? What y'all doing? But I mean, it's not really, not, I mean, we had Rondo, Drew, Holiday, Cousins, AD. That was that team that was real good. So it wasn't like, a, we had a lot of good people on the team. So it wasn't like, a, I'm just out here. Yeah, he's trash. Why y'all playing him? Right. It was like. Right. We weren't playing behind those scrubs. Yeah, they was nice. So it wasn't like, okay. So so that expires, basically. That situation dissolves. You end up back overseas. Where are we at now? And, and yeah. how are you feeling about now being out the league and, and kind of, I don't want to say having to go back to Europe, but you know what I mean, right? Like, so where you at? All right. This is the part that I ain't never really told nobody like that. So they didn't really cut me. They wanted to keep me through the whole year. I asked them to leave. I wasn't playing. I didn't really, I, I hate not playing. I was just watching and I was at dinner. We was, I, I remember like it was yesterday. It was me, uh, Mike Pemberthy, the coach of the Lakers, my trainer now, Mike G, Mike, New Holiday, AD. Mike, Mike, uh, Mike, are you okay, dog? Hey, bro, I don't like not playing. I can't watch nobody play basketball. I was making the minimum. I'm used to making a meal at least. I didn't like it. I mean, that's, I, I can understand that. I can understand that when that money talks. Money talks. So, Absolutely. I remember we, we was at dinner in New York all together on the road, and I was just looking around. I said, bro, I'm out. And Drew was like, you ain't eat your food yet. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm going back overseas. He was like, you serious? I was like, yeah, I'm leaving tomorrow. I can't do this. I might leave tonight. <laughs> he, was like, really? he was like, for real? You going to start playing eventually? I said, yeah, I don't know what eventually is, but I'm getting tired of waiting. <laughs> and, that's I was like, man, I got, and I was just like, man, I got dinner, man. This is my last dinner. It's on me. And so I paid for dinner. And then the next morning, I bought my own ticket and went home. Mm. Packed my shit. And like in two days, I was in Greece. In Pen mm. Back in Pen. Mm, I I didn't know that story, and I don't know if anybody else did. Uh, that's nuts. <laughs> so you're in back up in Panama, where you had already really served your league, and now you're really in your bag. When you get back, yeah, I, I was broke that year. To be honest, I couldn't make a three to save my life. I don't know what it was like switching the balls right away, or like not getting like a rhythm. But I couldn't make a three that whole year. But I end up, that was like my best statistical year up to date. I was like 16 and four or something. And we ended up losing to uh, Luca and them in the playoffs. But we were really good that year. We should have, we should have went to the final four. We fucked off. Right. So now I'm not going to need you to discuss a, your actual figures. But at this point, you're starting to really make a huge name for yourself in Europe. Um, and I'm sure you're running it up. Um, I went back to Penna at the same contract I had the year before, but it was only for like three or four months. 
Right. Because I came back in February. So maybe it was like, was it four months, six months, something like that. Mm-hmm. So then, that was, then I was a free agent. And that was when I signed my big deal to Milan. Right. Was that a smile? No. <laughs> <laughs> He said, I signed my biggest deal to Milan. I had a little smile on his face with that one. Nah, I just know we get into the to the part that everybody really want to talk about. So I just <laughs> I just know we get into that part soon. <laughs> so talk about it. Why, why are you gonna make me be the bad guy and ask you? Just talk about it, Mike. They wanna know. You know they wanna yeah, know. Man. People don't need to know this story, man. I don't need it's people cool. you know, thinking people are bad people, man. Mike, you know these folks want to know, man, what the hell happened in Milan? Well, the first year was good. I felt like I, I bust my ass for Milan. To be honest, we had a lot of injuries. I covered a lot of space that I wasn't really supposed to be covering. I was playing like 30 minutes, 39 minutes a game. I, I got injured like three times, and I'll never get hurt, to be honest. And I felt like I I did it above and beyond what I was supposed to do that year. That was I mean, the first year in Milan, right? Yeah, it's not my fault that our fucking second through fifth player got best players got hurt throughout the year. I mean, when we was all healthy, we was like four for fifth or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, you try your hardest. People don't people don't take respect you. you know, Mike, is it fair to say, uh, he who wears the crown? You know what? I ain't gonna go there. Let's just say this: you were clearly supposed to be the guy. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's fair. Do you feel like? Do you feel like you carried your weight as the guy in that situation? Yeah, I mean, I did everything I was supposed to do, but playing, making up for people being injured and trying to cover for other people and all this other stuff. And that ain't, I mean, that's over, that's overextending myself. That's too much. That's too much. I can't cover for injured players. I I didn't sign up for that. Right. So what, how those conversations go, Mike, when, when it came to a point where they were upset and disappointed with the outcome, you were frustrated feeling like you did your part. How were those conversations? Because I know it got really crazy. I, I, it was online. Everybody was watching it. You were tweeting. They were saying stuff through the media. It got kind of crazy. Well, see, on my exit meeting the first year, it was just like we building for the future. And we talked about players. And basically, I helped recruit half the players they got there now. Mm. So over the summer, uh, that we got a, they got a new coach. And, uh, you know, which didn't really bother me none. I mean, obviously, that's what y'all want to do. New coaches come every day. And, uh, you know, people just were saying that he was finna cut me, he was finna cut me. But, uh, you know, we, me and him had multiple conversations where he, that's just not what he told me. So he ne- at no point did he ever say, you know what, I don't think we're a match. He, he still ain't told me that. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so, so he never told you that, but the situation, you guys split. Well, we had phone conversations. We talked about the future, multiple, as in more than two or three. Mm. And uh, one day I woke up with an email saying that I don't got no minutes. An email from who exactly, Mike? Was it the coach? Was it the general manager? Was it the president? I don't it- even remember, but I remember my agent texting me and saying, hey, check your email. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right. Uh-huh. He was like, but first, first he said, don't get upset. Check your email. And I didn't know what the fuck that meant. I was like, what you mean? And then, at, like, shortly after, I'm getting a whole bunch of tweets, and it's all online. I'm like, yo. Well, we like, know how we know how Italy is when things when when there's anything happening in the media, it, it goes it's a wildfire. It goes kind of crazy, right? And you're the biggest name, biggest salary guy, maybe in all of Italy. So we kind of we gotta expect some of that to some degree, right? 
Yeah, I wasn't really mad about that. I just felt like, uh, you know. They could have handled the situation better. There you go. <laughs> like uh, you saying I'm coming back in, in middle June and then in late, in late July saying that I'm not, kind of cut up my uh, free agency window. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, you know, things were good. I, I was close with Kyle Hines at the time. Uh, and, uh, you know, he uh, asked how I felt about Cheska right after I got cut, and it was kind of moving fast. I was getting – it was just a lot going on at that time, and I was like, man, I got to get back in EuroLeague because I – honestly, I just didn't like that, so I had to, I, I had to, I had to go back. I, I was like, if I go back to the NBA, I'm going to be mad if I don't, if I don't get to see that. Again, mm-hmm. so so uh, uh, he talked to Coach Atutis, who uh, basically just told him, have him call me. And I called him, and we had a conversation. And he was just like, okay. And he kind of just was straight up, like, I don't know what happened there. That ain't really got nothing to do with me. But you come here, we're here to win, and this is how we do things. And, you know, ran down the whole thing. And I was just like, all right, bet. Let's make it happen. Yeah. And oh. like in like three days, I was signed. We didn't wait to announce it till like after my birthday or something. But in like three days, I was signed. Oh wow! So, how long did that, did you actually wait to drop that info? You held out on the people. Which, which part? <laughs> you said you signed, but you didn't announce it for how long was that? How long did that take for you? That was probably like two or three weeks. I was I was waiting on uh. Milan had to sign his paper to pay me basically. The they, they, had, they had they owe me some money still. So I need I need my money still. <laughs> so, they done paying me out so they can hear all about this now. <laughs> so where you at now, Mike? You, you still got that that energy for them, or where you at with it? <laughs> I mean, I like a couple people on their team. We cool, <laughs> but I mean, they they know how I feel over, about them over there. They, I mean, you know, I feel like people have, have been leaving me alone for a while, but they they should have left me alone. Right. <laughs> right. So now you're at Cheska, arguably one of the biggest basketball clubs all around Europe. EuroLeague championships, favorites every year. And since you've been there, you've been putting up numbers, been doing work. I actually was at the game last year when you guys was at Ephesus. We spoke after that. And man, watching you and Shane Larkin go at it was amazing. But that game, you was on fire. I remember after buzzer, you just threw the ball on the other end of the court and just went in. <laughs> um, so, it seems like Cheska is, you're comfortable there. Would I be correct with that statement? As far as basketball and the yeah. team? And- For sure. I mean, uh, first of all, coach is amazing, to be honest. He, uh, he lets me be me, which is, you know, how I'm supposed to, how I've been uh, so successful here, for real. Uh, a lot of coaches don't let you really play one-on-one or kind of play as fast paced as he allows me to do it, but he allows me to do it all the time. He, uh, we exploit mismatches a lot here, to be honest. If we see a, a, a mismatch in general, we kind of play one-on-one a lot. So uh, he allows me to do that a lot. He allows me to call a lot of plays. He gives me a lot of freedom. And uh, in turn, I think it's worked out. I think it's worked out for the both of us. I think uh, obviously we're winning right now, so that's good. I think uh, last year we were good too. Will getting hurt obviously hurt us last year, but I think uh, I think mm-hmm. we still would have been one of four. And uh and this year I think we're uh we're ready. Look like you guys are kinda in, in primed and ready to make a long run into maybe potentially even winning this thing. Um to date you have not won a Euroleague championship. Is that something that you said that you said, you know what, I can't get out of this game without hoisting that trophy. Is that something that is that a goal you set? 
I mean, yeah, for sure. I wanted to run at it last year because everybody, everybody loved Ephesus. I really wanted to run at it last year. I really wanted to see if, if we could steal one. I think nobody really counted on us, but I think, uh, I think we were tough last year. I think we was a tough out, to be honest. I think we were still fourth with everybody not bringing us up at all. So, I mean, uh, I wanted to run at it last year, but now uh, I signed a three-year extension. Will's here for two more. Molotino signed three years. Shingelia signed three years. Hackett signed for another two. I mean, we got a we got a team here that's gonna be here for a while. So I think uh we gelling right now and hopefully we can continue that way. And I think uh we can be really scary. Mm-hmm. So Mike, you've played in a lot of different countries. Something I ask, you know, everybody who come on the show. Which country did you I would say enjoyed or loved the most. If you had to live in one of the countries you played in, which one would it be? Greece. And why? For sure. Greece, I just like the weather. Athens is amazing. The weather, all the activities. I, I used to go outside every day. I never go outside here. So. <laughs> That's kind of like Seattle. Hey, yo, watch your mouth. <laughs> nah, it's Portland, we got the same weather, dog. So you ain't saying nothing. I never lived in Portland. A little less rainy in Portland. <laughs> Damn, dog, you supposed to ride with me on that one, dog. I'm on the side, but it's a little less rainy in Portland. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, uh, hey, tell me this. This is another question we like to ask everybody on the pod, man. Uh, who is the one dude? That you in the game and you just like, man, he's cooking me right now. <laughs> Who is the one dude? Well, it ain't really been nobody recently like that. But when I first got in Europe, it was uh, Taya Dosich. Mm. Mm. It was nothing I could do with, bro. He was just so smart. I didn't know really how to guard him. Every time I touched him, it was a foul. Then, like, I get over the screen and he'll just shoot. Then when I, like, still get over, he'll make some pass. And I'm like, damn, that was nice. It was just a lot of times he'll just do something. I'm like, yeah, that was nice right there. <laughs> now we we all know. I mean, you you won the scoring title last year. Uh, you look like you're on your way to winning another one. Um, so you gave everybody buckets that we know. But who's the dude who just said who just sits down and uh, maybe maybe he don't lock you up because I don't see nobody locking you up, but. He gives you issues. Who's that dude? It's it's some people that, that play good defense that I'm like, okay, that, he's solid. I need to like uh like for example, Compato. I don't I, I don't do as many moves when he's when he used to guard me. I don't do as many moves. I like I like to keep it simple with Compato. He got good hands. Uh with Nick Kalathis too, he got good hands too. So I like to it's certain people that got good hands that you, I don't like to do a lot of moves around. You got to keep it simple and keep the ball away from them. Uh, Jeff Taylor. Jeff hmm. Taylor's tough. Sorry. He's strong. He athletic. He kind of make me uh, – I got to get a little bit of extra space for him because he gets he get a good hand. So, him and some people right there off the top of my head. All right. We, yeah. Go ahead, Dave. What would you say since you've been over here the, the years you've been? Maybe the craziest thing, the craziest thing that you've seen. What story do you have? Because we've all seen some stuff while we played over here that we were like, man, I can't believe this happened. Like I, some players came, they seen bombs go off during the game. They seen fights break out out of nowhere. People walking to the gym and people smoking cigarettes <laughs> while they playing. So. What would be the craziest thing you've you've seen? It could be on or off the court. It doesn't matter. I think uh, experience was uh, we played in Greek League playoffs. I think maybe my first year. Yeah, my first year we was winning the game. The game was over. We was playing Olympiacos in the championship. It was game five, I think. We was winning by like 14, probably with like two minutes left. And it wasn't getting no better. It wasn't like one of the 14s where they got action. Like the game, it got up to 14. Like the game was over. So they started just throwing flares. And I'm like, all right, we're just going to finish this out and get the fuck out of here real fast. And then they start throwing bombs. And I'm like, yo, we got, nah, we ain't finishing nothing. We got to get out of here now. 
So they start throwing bombs. They start hitting the tunnel. Like, we just rushed out of there, and we in the back celebrating champagne, yada, yada, yada. And uh, so we like, yeah, we won the championship. It's over. That one minute, whatever is left, we're not going back out there. So the refs come back out there, and they like, yeah, I got to come back. So we had to go back out there. Everybody's jersey is just wet. Nobody got – my socks is half off. My, I had to pick my jersey off the ground and put it back on because the same five people that was on the court had to go back on. So uh, we had to go back out there and try to, like – we just basically walked the ball back down the court. But that, I think that was the craziest. They had to clear all the fans out. And, like, uh, some of my homeboys from back home was there, and they got cleared out and had to, like, sneak back in because they was on our side, you know, Olympiacos. Choke slam one of them or something. So yeah. they had to like sneak <laughs> Wow, because we was away. They was trying to kill us. Oh, I think James Gist told us that story. Was yeah. James Gist on your team that year? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He just told us that same story. Mm -hmm. Say y'all was in the timeout and it felt like a, a piece of dynamite rolled in the middle of the timeout. The bombs were blowing up, and I thought I was like, okay, that one's in the stands. Okay, we got some time. And then I was like, nah, that one's like two feet away from me. We got to go. <laughs> they were throwing like chairs and stuff. I was like, yo, this is wild. It was one of them times, it was probably the only time in my life I was like, yo, I'm finna die. It's over for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike, another question we like to ask every guest to come on the pod, man. Can you name, and you can use dudes you either, uh, play with, against, however you want to do it. But can you give us a, a starting five all time of guys who played in Europe? Americans or Europeans, it don't matter. Wow. Okay. Do I count? I don't count. Yeah, yeah you can put yourself in there. Put yourself in there. I'm, I'm going to put myself in there at all times. So. Well, that's what I mean. So, uh, I'm not gonna, Keith, I'm not gonna Keith, put myself there. Keith put himself in it. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Keith Langford named Keith name Keith Langford named the one, the three, the five, and the four, and then went back and put himself at the two. <laughs> <laughs> Who did he put at one? Did anybody put me in they five? No, no. I'm just he put hey he put. <laughs> He put Cologne at the, at the one. Oh, yeah, that's his guy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. His guy. that's his guy. Yeah. Okay. I'm not mad at that. Who did, who did JG put? That is one. I don't know. We got to go back and look at the episode. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. I'm, I'm oh, uh, did he put, did he put one of the Greek guys? Dio Matidis. Yeah, he put DM too. You can't he can't you can't be mad at that. Yes. Mike, you can't be mad. <laughs> Alex. Alex. Okay. <laughs> I don't right. want to accept it, but I'll accept it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. DMT is one of them dudes, but go ahead. All right. With or against or don't even matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. matter. I think I'm going to pick years. It's going to make it easier on me. Okay. With that, my final four year, Barusis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Barusis, not after five. Big fella. I'm going to pick. Damn, this is tough. This is a good one. I didn't think I had to answer a tough question like this. <laughs> so we got Barusis at the five. We got you yeah, at the my, one. I don't know if I'm putting myself in. I'm going okay. to exempt okay. myself. I'm going to exempt myself. I'm going to go MV the year Sergio Yule won MVP. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put him at the mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do the year Nando DiColo won MVP, him at the two. Mm -hmm. I used to like that. Nando. Yeah. 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 Nando. Yeah. Damn, boy. <laughs> I'm going to put uh, at the four. The four is tough. Four and three is always tough in Europe because it's always like twos that just ate some burgers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 
I'm gonna do four. I'm gonna go Miritich. Mm. I like Nico. I Me like too. Nico. Shoot. And then the three. I'm going to go, I forgot somebody for sure, and it's going to bother me when I look back. At the three, I'm going to go Will and be biased. <laughs> I ain't mad at that. Will Clyburn. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be biased. The group. That's a, that's a squad. That's a nice squad. It's a lot yeah, of shit. We, we like to keep up around it. We're not going to play no defense, probably. Cause nah. would, I mean, <laughs> nah, it don't, like, it don't look like no defense will be played, but it's going to be a lot of scoring. Yeah, Will will play some defense. We just put Will on everybody and just move them around. <laughs> right. Mike, I, I wanted to ask you a, 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 a serious question. Um, tell me this. Being, having gone through everything you've gone through in your time in Europe, if you could talk to every young dude out there who's looking to jump into this, what would you tell him? I mean, you better love it mm. because if you don't, it's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, everybody want to make money. Everybody want to play basketball. I mean, at least they say they do. But, I mean, some people ain't never left their they city. They didn't want to go away for college. So I don't know how you're going to come overseas and be functional over here. So, I mean, just be ready for that. I mean, it's a grind. You got to love it. You got to want to wake up every day and go to the gym and get shots up and lift and get ready for the travel. Because, I mean, now I travel easy. We travel on jets and stuff now. But it ain't always been jets. It's been a lot of connections and long layovers and having to use Wi-Fi because I, I didn't feel like paying for a phone bill and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's a lot of little stuff that people don't really think about being away from family, not going home for no no holidays. I don't really got holidays. My holidays is in the summer. So I mean, uh just that stuff. I mean if you can if you can be mentally prepared for all that, you're gonna have a good time. Cause I mean obviously it's it's competitive basketball. I enjoy playing in every uh game in your league. I enjoy your league a lot. To be honest, I like watching it too. So I mean all the basketball stuff is the easy part to be honest. That's good, Mike. Um, that's actually a great answer. Um, one of the other things I, I was hoping that you would touch on specifically because of your experience, can you talk a little bit about some of the differences between the NBA game and the European game? Uh, yeah. You're everything, every little play matters. It's more about we got to get the best shot. We got to get a like uh, the best shot possible. If that dude is open, you got to hit him. It's not like, oh, I feel like shooting this shot or I'm the better player. Nah, you pass the ball to the open dude and he's supposed to shoot that. And if he don't make it, that's not your problem. You move on to the next play. It's a, uh, I think it's more coverages and scouting for the most part. I mean, obviously I think it's the top NBA teams probably treat it more like your league. They probably got a lot of scouting and coverages and stuff like that. But the bottom teams, they ain't they ain't doing all that. They don't it's not enough. They don't they got too many young guys that don't care. So I mean, your league is more it's closer to college sometimes, in a way. It's kind of like a mix between college and NBA. It's still up it's up tempo and a lot of pick and rolls like NBA, but it's more uh get the best shot and like uh you do want to get stops and a lot of defense oriented stuff. And obviously the the no defensive three seconds rule. Let's people do whatever they want on defense, which is crazy. But <laughs> you just have people, people just say people are amazing defenders. All they do is sit by the hoop all damn day. Uh, I don't say so. You can't say that. This guy's a big man who loves a block yeah. shot. Yeah. That's his. <laughs> he loves his block shots, but he didn't just, he got to play some defense. That'll make you a good defender because you're seven five and you sit by the rim. I, don't know. I locked everybody up. It didn't matter. See, that's, I can respect that. Getting on the way, it didn't matter. I'll switch out. I'll be, I, but I'm going to try to beat your shit. That's what I will do. I, I, I can respect that, but the, I'm the, um, yeah. Mike, <laughs> I'm the I don't look at it from the other side, dog. You're trying to go down the lane and dunk on dudes. I ain't dug that a long time. I'm doing similar. <laughs> <laughs> 
I do floaters and finger rolls and step backs. Oh, <laughs> every listen, anybody who's ever watched you play, Mike, I'm sorry, we got to touch on this. Anybody who's ever watched you play, they've seen this scoop floater from 17. <laughs> Where did you get that from? <laughs> and how did you get to a point where you started trusting that shot in the game? Uh, to be honest, I stole it a little bit. <laughs> I stole it a little bit from Cozier from Madrid. Okay. We was at Vasconia together. He used to always do it with his left hand. And I'm like, bro, that's counterfeit. There's no way you could just keep doing it. So we used to play around before practice, like, seeing who could do it better and stuff like that. So then in a game one day, I just did it, like, off an of instinct. And I was like, yo, that shit worked. So then all of a sudden, I just started doing it all the time. And then ever since, ever since that year, it was just like, yo, I got to keep this in my game. Like, this is nice. I got to – this got to stay with me. This can't go nowhere. Like and that. Boom. Now I now I do it, Mike. That shot is nuts, dog. <laughs> That's nuts, bro. Everybody points out the one where I was already in the rhythm. I had like twenty at that point, like the first quarter. Obviously, I was doing dumb shit at that point, but <laughs> I don't normally do stuff like that. I normally just do the regular one, but <laughs> right. unless you're in your bag, <laughs> yeah, I gotta be feeling good. But you know, when people feeling good, they start doing anything. <laughs> Right. Well, me at least, I'll do anything. There you, there you saying something. <laughs> you would do anything, Mike. I, I had, I gotta bring these stuff, this stuff up because these, these dudes love. Like, one of the things that separates you from almost everybody in in Europe is the separation you get. How is it that you're able to cover? 12 feet on a side step. Like, <laughs> how are you doing that? Practice, to be honest. I've seen uh, – I stole this one too, to be honest. I got to be honest. I stole it. I, I watched Manulas do the right one a lot. Mm. And I was like, all right, he old and he don't not athletic and he still get it off. So if I did it, I'm going to jump way further and I can do it like my own way. So then, but he only does it really to the right. He do it to the left sometimes. And so when I started doing it to the right, I was like, people gonna start noticing I need to do it to the left too. So then I just start working on it both ways. And uh, to be honest, in the summer, I do it like way further though. I try to do it as far as possible to make it real uncomfortable. I, I, I don't do it as far in, in like real games, but in, in the summer I do like as far as I can, jumping as far as I can and shoot. Basically, you're training yourself in the summer to shoot that shot in the game by exaggerating how, how far you actually jump. Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. I got you. Mike, what's different about your regimen, man? Because you got a whole different game. I don't see many dudes anywhere with your package. What is different about what you're doing in the summer, man? Uh, part is my trainer. He, he like, real, like uh... – I don't, whatever the word is, he he integrative. Like, he kind of, uh, like, I do, like, this minute drill, like, all step backs with a weight vest on. <laughs> it's like one of them ones that hug your body so it don't move around. Mm -hmm. But I, like, do stuff like that during the summer just to, like, get used to, like, you know, you get into the season, your legs get tired. You're not going to be fresh all the time. So he called it the fourth quarter. He mm -hmm. said this is just like the fourth quarter you you don't have to do this in the fourth quarter. So I got like that type of stuff, catch and shoot stuff. And uh, mic and drills. I do a lot of mic and drills for my, for my little touch and scoops. Hmm. It's crazy as that sound. I never did a mic and drill when they used to tell me to do it with a big man, but I started doing it when I had to, when I started figuring out that work helped me with my touch. That was everyday so, drill for us. I see what I'm saying? You never thought I would do it, huh? Nah, I didn't see too many guys doing it. I'm going to be honest with you. So, so I started doing stuff like that. I just started doing a lot of stuff that, uh, like, I'm small, so I had to get – I got to get off a lot of stuff that obviously somebody who's 6'5 don't got to do as much to get it off. So I got to be able to get it off and make it flow natural for me and make it, mm -hmm. you know, effective. So uh, 
you know, it grew over time. Like in Basconia, if you go back and watch, and like my first year in Panama, it's a lot of step backs and just in mid range, like a lot of mid range step backs. So it just, I basically just expanded it a lot, kept, kept working on it, and uh, you know, it's been working recently. Well, I, I want to talk. Can you talk a little bit about how what you how you approach your summer? Are you always looking to add something? Because you got a lot in your bag. So I'm, I'm I'm trying to figure out. I see that you steal things from dudes, and that's great. But how how do you how do you just keep seem to you just seem to keep developing and keep adding to your game? Yeah, I mean, uh, every summer I kind of go into the summer like knowing like, yeah, I got to work on that for this summer. Like, uh, I remember uh, after last year, my coach kept getting on to me. I kept missing a lot of left-hand layups, which isn't normally me. I'm usually a great layup maker and uh, for spot shots because I'm not normally a spot-up shooter, but I like to uh, – I don't normally feel comfortable shooting them either just because – I don't get them so often that when I do get them, I'm, I'm just, you know, not really prepared for it. So this summer was a big uh, left-hand layup and, and spot shot summer for me. Just mm -hmm. just in terms of uh, – I always work on my regular stuff that I work on, but always trying to keep an emphasis on stuff that I need to work on for sure. And I worked on a lot of post-ups this summer. Mm. Even though right, I man. don't post up every game, but, you know, always got to have – be able to do everything. Mike, man, we want to uh, thank you for, you know, giving us your time, your comments, your energy for coming on the show. For uh, people who want to follow you, check you out, you know, on your social media, what's your handle? How can people, you know, follow you to see what you're doing? Um, on Instagram, I'm pretty sure it's Mr. Natural underscore zero five. And on Twitter, I think it's the natural underscore oh five but they could be flip-flopped. <laughs> we'll make sure we get it right when we put it underneath here. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you. It's, it's something, it's, it's, I think I said it right, but it could be, it could be backwards. It could be backwards. <laughs> Again, man, we want to thank you for your time, man, and your wisdom that you gave, you know, everyone who's watching and listening. Uh, we wish you have a, we hope you have a successful year, continue having a successful year this year. Good luck on the championship run. I know you guys are one of the favorites. And we wish you all the best for this year. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, Mike, man. This is big, man. Appreciate you. Thank you for joining the Eurostepping Podcast. Catch us on next, catch us on YouTube, Next One's Network page and also nextones.com. Also catch us on audio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. That's Eurostep Podcast, no G. We got all the game. Thought it was a joke, what they still playing games for? Holes in my denim, never holes.